Don't ask why I'm on the floor. Um, I was gonna start filming this vlog on the bed, but I don't know, my boyfriend just left all of his like laundry like organized. It's organized, but it's not in the closet. So um, we're doing this here. Hey everyone, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, guys, if you guys couldn't tell, is my spoiler-filled vlog of Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the last book in the um, Last Hours trilogy. I got the last copy on the shelf. Like, I'm sure they had more in the stock, but like, literally, all that was left in the Shadow Hunter shelf was one one paperback copy of Chain of Iron and this last copy of Chain of, Th Chain of Thorns. This is the spoiler-filled version. I should have my spoiler-free review of this book up before the vlog. So if you guys haven't checked that out, feel free to. But if you are looking for the spoilers, here it is. I nearly died. I nearly died getting this book and this other book that I have. Um, I nearly died. Like, I was five minutes from home. I had a right turn, like two right turns left. One of them was into my apartment complex. And then someone decided that lanes just don't exist and I'm just gonna drive in the right lane going like down the street. So I almost died. I'm fine. I'm shaking. It's fine. I need to take a shower and just calm down. But this book is, like I said, the final book in the Last Hours trilogy. This follows... It's kind of a sequel series, so it might be a little, like, hard for y'all to, like, keep up if you haven't read the rest of the books, if you're watching the spoiler version. But this follows the children of the Infernal Devices. We have James Car... We have James, we have Cordelia, Lucy, Matthew, all them fun little merry thieves. Kit, um, Kit and... Thomas. It's great times. So the final book, I'm super excited. I'm not super happy that Grace is on the cover, but unfortunately, like there's an alt, this has roses on it, but this one, the alternate cover doesn't match. Like this is supposed to be James done by I think Charlie Bowater, but it literally does not match the vibes of the books. So therefore, I will not be using it. I appreciate the work that was done into it because it's a beautiful shot of James, but it's just not the same vibes. But moving on to the other book that I bought, it's actually a 2023 release. It isn't on my list of releases because it's on a different vlog list for a secret, 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 secret um, vlog that I plan on having up probably around like May or something, just in the in the springtime. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, a novel by Heather Fawcett. I thought this was going to have like a cover that you could remove, but no, it's like, it's the actual cover, which I prefer because it's not a waste of paper, like it's not a waste of paper here, but it just makes it for a more durable cover, especially when I'm paying such a pretty penny for it. I have no idea what this is about. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint of what the vlog is about, but it's, um, I'm trying out cozy fantasies. So you, there will be other books in that vlog, but this is the book that I bought because I, I found it and I was like, I'm just going to get it now. So yeah, super excited for that, but I'm gonna go take a shower, calm down a little bit, wrap up my wrap up my finances, or most of my finances, I think, or write them down at least for the end of the month, and then I will start reading, because I have to pick out a, 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 have to pick out a bookmark, I gotta get comfortable, I got to have something to eat, because I'm kind of hungry. It's been a long, it's been a long day. Maybe, like, in the nearest future, I will go ahead and, like, tell you what the long day was about but as of right now I'm still processing so I'll catch up with you guys shortly and I'll talk to you guys when I get to the reading I'm not prepared someone's watching me clean my little buddy god if looks could kill
since Lisa isn't up to date, I'm just gonna page five already, seriously. James gazed at his father. Will looked tired, his mane of black hair disarrayed. People often told James that he was like Will, which he knew was a compliment. All his life, his father had seemed the strongest man he knew, the most principled, the most fierce with his love. Will did not question himself, no. James was nothing like Will Herondale. <laughs> okay, it is almost like 11.30. I am only on chapter five. And you're probably like, Therese, you read faster than that. Why are you only in chapter five? I have to keep stopping. And not because the book is so good, but there are just lines that get me so emotional. Like right where I stopped at the end of a scene on page 90, page 91. And James is talking to Jem about the whole Gracelet situation. And Jem points out that like he um like he has to like listen to Grace's part like dispat like without feeling or emotion. He has to be a neutral party in this entire Gracelet situation. And he goes, It is not easy for me, Jem said. His expression had not changed, but his pale hands moved, nodding together. I know I must listen dispassionately to Grace's testimony, yet when she speaks of what was done to you, my silent heart cries out, this was wrong, it was always wrong. You love as your father loves, wholly, without conditions or hesitancy. To use that as a weapon is blasphemy. And then it just references, where is it? I think it's like in the first chapter, I read it out to Andre. So it's like the first chapter on page, like it starts on page five and ends on page six where like he talks about like how his father will has been the fiercest man he's ever known this man loves without question and loves with everything he has and james was not that same man and to have jim tell james that no you are like your father you love with everything you have and it is a sin to use that as a weapon to get what you what someone needs out of you and then Ariadne just came out to her mother as gay, and now she's hiding out in Anna's, and I like Kit is creating a thing to send messages through like fire, and then like Thomas sent like a letter to Alistair through the fire, but it's not actually gonna reach Alistair. But somewhere in my little brain, my little brain cell here that's working very hard to understand this book. Don't talk down about yourself. I'm gonna. Do the brain cell is tired. The brain cell is tired. If I'm not allowed to talk down, you're not allowed I'm to I'm not talking down about myself. I'm saying my brain cell is tired and little. What is it saying? You have one brain cell imply. That I share a brain cell with Steph. What else does it imply? That it's overworked and needs to use its PTO. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> Can I finish this? Don't talk down about yourself. I won't. Hmm? I'm listening. The community of brain cells. Happy <laughs> yes. is working very hard to like read through or to read through. Oh yeah, the community of brain cells is working very difficultly because I have a feeling that somehow the letters are getting sent to Alistair and now Thomas is sending letters to Alistair and Alistair's going to read all the letters and be like, no, I choose you like he's a Pokemon and it's just going to be a mess and Grace is going to get a redemption arc where she's going to die because that's kind of the word they're leading up to where she's like, no, I don't worry for my safety just for the safety of others. She's going to get, I don't want her to have a redemption arc, but she's on the fucking cover. My head hurts, which means I just haven't had enough water. But I am probably going to go to bed after I read this little, this last little scene here. After these next two scenes, because I can't finish this chapter. This, Let's see, I'm on chapter five. I'm like maybe like half, not even halfway through chapter five. No. And this is how many pages I have left. Now you're like, Therese, it's probably not a lot of pages. This is a Cassie Clare book. This amount of pages probably is like 20 pages. So I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to read two scenes and call it a night. Because your girl, as I said in the beginning, Mother Nature decided to bless her. The sins of man fuck with the women. And I'm tired. <laughs>
<laughs> like I feel like I'm hungover with how like dehydrated my body is just getting. And I've had like th I've had three of these today. <laughs> I've had more than my fair share of water, and I'm still dehydrated. So I'm just gonna finish these two scenes, brushing my teethies, and then go to bed and dream about the stress that I will be under for the next at least like four days. So I was correct, and the letters that Thomas was sending sending to Alistair, got sent to Alistair. I hate it here. I'm gonna go to bed now. Page 121. Ah! So it's now Wednesday. I am now on page 124. I haven't gotten very far from the like the freak out that you guys saw like not two seconds ago. But I think it's cruel that it's a hundred pages in, over a hundred pages in, and we're just now getting our first illustration. It's cruel. I also think it seems like there's gonna be, I'm also terrified, cause there's a love triangle. They're introducing Cordelia, I'm gonna set y'all down. They're introducing Cordelia and Matthew being in love, or like, at least like in a triangle together with James, this late in this game. It is the third book. A lot can happen in this book, which like might serve Lisa's like, cons like idea that Matthew dies because I don't see why you would introduce a love triangle like a physical aspect of love triangle So late in the game and then to boot I think Grace is most definitely gonna get a a, a Redemption because she had a very sweet moment with sweet little kit sweet little Christopher My man visits this woman in prison and goes yeah, so I just want to make sure you're okay but also I have this thing that I'm trying to work on and you're and Henry's busy and you're the only other shadow hunter I know with like a strong scientific mind. So can you look these over? What? Okay, what? All right. But the plan is, the plan is that I'm hopefully by tonight I can at least reach the chapter 8. Um, I don't know, where is chapter 8? Not chapter 10. Chapter 9. The plan is to read at least up until chapter... Sherman, not, not the camera. But not the, not, not the, not the camera. Not the camera. We don't rub our faces on the camera. It's like, more expensive than you. Back up. Pro okay, maybe not chapter, because this is how far I have to get to chapter 8. I still have to eat dinner. It's like 10 o'clock. Don't ask me. I just apparently don't know how to cook chicken very well. I'd be waiting for chicken to cook for like an hour now. So maybe chapter 10. I'll try to read to chapter 10. I think chapter 10 is doable for tonight. And then I am going to read more tomorrow. I just do have to do a couple of things for like YouTube stuff. But that should be pretty quick. And then I can just like read more tomorrow and be done. Not done. I'm not going to finish this book tomorrow. But read more tomorrow and go from there. So yes, I'll catch up with y'all. Um, I'll probably have another snippet of me reacting to something. Because Andrew said to let her know when I reach chapter 7. And then Charlotte got to chapter 7 and she said she had a lot of emotions. So I can one can only assume 
that my reaction would be noteworthy for chapter seven. James is sitting in the room when they were about to do it. He almost watched his sort of wife, sort of not really wife, fake wife, kind of wife, and pair, but I almost fuck. of love oh, and heartbreak. I can't keep hanging on if I can do this for another like 500 pages. Mm, I'm gonna go eat dinner now. It is now Friday. I meant to update you guys while I was doing like, like a reading spree last night on Thursday, but I ended up with such a huge like so like migraine that I was left sobbing in bed in the dark. So that did not happen. But I am on page 276 of Chain of Thorns. Where do I even start? Like there's so much happening. But can I just say? Like, there's a miscommunication trope in this, and it's equally as frustrating as any miscommunication trope. And the annoying thing is, is that it's a fantasy. So the miscommunication trope in my head makes more sense to happen, because there's so much going on that sometimes things get, you know, miscommunicated. But this miscommunication trope can be easily fixed but James does not want to fix it. The dumbass is literally like, I love Cordelia now. I never loved Grace. And Matthew and Cordelia and the rest of the world are like, okay, well, what happened? And James goes through this entire emotional journey. Like in the span of paragraphs, every time the things, the situation's been brought up. And he just goes, like thinking of like the Grace lit and how like he's never really known that he was in love with like this was this, this what was happening and then he was never really in love with Grace it was just the Grace lit and that the concept of love was never a thing he never thought about a future with Grace it was just all encompassing like obsession and then as he's going through this process everyone's like waiting there like are we good and then his conclusion is that he can't tell anyone as if he wasn't like non-consensually shoved in the situation for years on end. And he's like, I can't say, but I love Cordelia now. And then he's upset and kind of mad that no one, like that Cordelia is like having a hard time wrapping his her head around the concept. I'm just annoyed. Cause I'm sitting here like this part of the plot could have been easily like 
situate like Cordelia would have had like probably like a harder time picking between Matthew and um, James had James just come forward and that would have been more interesting than her going I love James but James doesn't know what he wants but now he's saying he knows what he wants but I don't know how to feel about there's just it's the one thing where I'm like, what is this nonsense? What in the world is this? Because this is like, it's just going on for too long. I'm like, I don't want to hear no shit about the gracelet ever again. Never, ever again. And then uh, there are so many instances where I'm just like both Matthew and Chris, like Christopher's like child. And they're not even together. It's just like both of their like interactions and like how they talk to like the world and how they just like move about the world is just very much how I move about the world like I too would hold a gavel and start smacking it in the random of a meeting being like meeting adjourned meeting to start and everyone's like what the fuck and then it's like I found it it's handy it's just me I just I just feel very close emotionally and mentally to Thomas and Christopher it is just great and it's just a lot of things like now Lucy and Cordelia are mad at each other because Cordelia rightfully so was le was a kept secret of a lot of things a lot of things in Lucy's life like Lucy being able to control like speak to the dead Jesse her friendship with Grace and all the things that led up to the end of Chain of Iron and then Cordelia and then Lucy's like I don't understand why you're so mad at me like you also hid things from me and Cordelia's like I would have told you eventually you never told me about these things I had to find out from other people and now they're not talking and Cordelia can't be Lucy's parabatai because she can't fight being Willis Paladin and I have a feeling I know where this is going because Paladins Paladins can can't from what I'm seeing thus far from what everyone has reiterated at least like two or three times within the span of like the past like 50 pages is that paladins can't stop being paladins willingly because the situation was so consensual between the angel and the shadow hunter for the shadow hunter to become the paladin they basically stay paladins until their deathbeds now in my brain of brains my secret my plot twist maker brain lump of lump of mass is thinking it's thinking that if that's the only way to stop from being a paladin that they might try to like momentarily stop Cordelia's heart just because it's just it's just the way that the the cookie crumbles if instances like these they'll try to stop her heart or she'll like die momentarily like in battle or something and they bring her back and since she died she is no longer a paladin for Lilith and that's how we get her happy ending but that's just my theory thus far. I don't know what other theories there could happen. Um, that's just what I'm thinking. Also, I learned the other day that I have a misprint novel. So, between it, tw chapter 26 and chapter 27, there's a little title that says Intermission of Grief. We're all terrified of the chapter. I am too. But I was looking at my pages here. I don't know if you could see it. But right here, there are two very distinct, close together black lines. And at first I was like, that's a little too close for an illustration. Like you can see how far apart the illustrations are, like loosely. So I looked at it. I was like, okay, let's spoil myself because I have something in my guts telling me it's not right. I flipped through it and I have two full on black pages between chapter, between intermission of grief and chapter 27. At first I was like, don't tell me I paid $25, $25, well, a little lesser because I think I have, I got the discount on it, it's so like 24 bucks, 23, 23.90, somewhere along those lines to be missing two illustrations. So I waited because at the moment I'm the only one that has it physically, I believe, we were waiting on Lisa for a while, I think Andrew's still waiting for her copy. And Charlotte was waiting on her copy as well. Charlotte finally got her copy yesterday, and I was like, I need you to do me a favor. Don't spoil yourself, but do me a favor. And she was like, what's up? And she's like, I need you to flip to Intermission of Grief and tell me if there are just two random black pages between twenty that those chapters. And she's like, what pages? And I tell her. I was like, it's 546, and then it's 5, like 57 or something. And she was like, yeah, I don't have those pages. So I just got a misprint, apparently. 
so I mean I don't know if that'll bring it up in market value in the future if my children like a bit like 20 years down the line or something if we were like hard on cash I'd be like I have to sell my misprinted edition of Chain of Thorns. I don't know if that'll ever be the situation, but I have a misprint. It's a fun little thing. I don't know if I said it. I think I said it. But basically, their entire Matthew and Cordelia's entire time with in Paris was tinged with a lie. I think I said it. I had an inkling because, like, she mentioned that, like, oh yeah, Matthew's not displaying any kind of signs that he's like withdrawing from alcohol, like my dad did, and I was like, right, Matthew's an alcoholic. He said he would stop drinking cold turkey, and he hasn't. I was like, oh no. And then it turned out to be the truth. He had like he had like brandy or wine or something sent up to his room every morning before Cordelia came down, and then he got him t through the day to be able to act like completely normal. And now I'm sitting here like, this is fine. This is great. Okay, yeah, that's how I have. That's as far as I have so far. I was hoping to page 300 last night, but by the time that my migraine was going through. Like, I can kind of still feel it right here. Um, by the time my migraine finally hit, I had to, like, stop. So I read a little bit during my lunch, and I got to here. So I'm probably going to go ahead and, well, I'm going to take a shower first. Because, like, monthly time of the month on top of a migraine where I, like, literally had to stay bundled up the entire night in order for my migraine to, like, calm down. And it's just not a, it's just, it's just not a good time for me. I am feeling inky and sticky. My hair's looking kind of kind of limp and messy so we are gonna go ahead and do that now but yes i will keep you guys updated on what um becomes probably more reactions as i fear that more things will happen in the next 300 400 what is it 500 pages there's 500 pages there's 778 i am at 276 it's like a little over 500 pages left of this novel. Oh my lord. We can't handle this. We have Alistair telling Thomas he's moving back to Tehran um, because his mom is moving there with the baby and Cordelia has an entire future and all Alistair has is Thomas. And Thomas being like, am I not enough? And Alistair being like, you can't be my only reason to stay. I can't live like this with this book. I can't do it. I'm gonna get wrinkles. Wow, you're really pale. Thanks. You like glow. Thanks. Love you too. Look at it. I, it it is right now. All right. Well, you'll see it. never cared for Alistair, Sona said. Not the way he deserves to be cared for. Alistair deserves to have someone in his life who understands how truly wonderful it he is, who suffers when he suffers and is happy when he is happy. Oh, that's cute. I know. Alright, so I, it's now like 11 o'clock on Friday. I stopped officially at chapter 24. Um, and currently, I am on page 468. So I think I started this portion, like, tonight at 276, and I'm at 468. So I think I read a good 200 pages. We're over halfway. I have probably have, like, another quarter of the book left. But also, I think so, about a quarter of the book. There are a lot of things happening. But I'll sum up the big bits. Um... Ev Tatiana was not actually Tatiana at the one something more. 
that was a greater demon as a de decoy, Tatiana pops up at Christmas party, takes baby Alexander, you know, Cece's and Gabe, Gabriel's newest little baby, who is three, three, kidnaps him after threatening to stab a toddler with a knife, then almost proceeds to put an entire rune on him, which, as you guys know, putting a rune on an underage child, like, I think the youngest a child can have a rune is, like, what, 11 or 10? Putting a rune on a child can traumatize them and shock them and kill them. So thankfully they stopped her from doing that before he could finish said rune. Baby will have scar. What else have we learned? In the process, Tatiana let us spill a, we a secret that Tessa's dad is Belial. Which the entire institute was like, oh my god, oh my god, how could you keep this from us? As if multiple warlocks know like are children of demons i believe magnus's own father is the prince of nine hells but it's fine because no one knows who magnus's father is but tessa being a woman and a warlock and a shadow hunter mixed together that's not right that her father is a demon of nine of nine one of the princes of nine hells Let's see, what else do we know? Grace finally told Cordelia about the gracelet. The fucking gracelet. And then, so Cordelia and James made up. There was a pistol to the doorknob because the door wouldn't open. And then they had sex. As one does, I suppose. Mm. It's potentially that... The current Inquisitor is blackmailing Charles for being gay. We haven't finished out that plotline yet. And then Tatiana, who's in the Silver City, or the Bone City, City of Bones, Bone City, City of Bones, the prison, is now somehow managed to get out of her confinement and then get a silent brother who's not a silent brother to break into Grace's cell open it and then attack her by removing her gift and I ended my read with the lines Grace began to scream she found she could not screaming over and over but nobody came I have no idea how to feel at the moment there is like so many like cute moments littered with so many depressing and agonizing moments that my brain is getting whiplash. I don't know what to do. Part of me just wants to crochet for the rest of the night. The other half of me is like, we should write. Because I would like to be the person that inflicts that kind of happiness and agony on people in the near future. And to boots, to boots the boots from Dora, the explorer. Um, nope, thought went away. Oh, to boots, to boots. I will say, I think Cassie Claire with her like sex scenes, she's like trying to amp it up a little bit, but then like sometimes things will take me out. Like, I'm sorry, nothing can beat the clay scene of them having sex for the first time in hell, nothing will beat Tess and Will having sex after potentially thinking that Jem is dead while Tessa is engaged to the now deceased Jem. Nothing will top Jem ripping, ripping Tessa's corset like it was nothing because he didn't know how to undo the laces. He went rip, rip. Nothing will top that and yet she tries to with the pistol, to the gun and like I get it but when that happened I like both found it attractive I don't know why as I do not like guns but I also found it taking me out of the situation because I'm so sorry back in the day doorknobs were made of pure metal no right metal or silver so wouldn't 
it be unsafe to shoot a gun at a metal doorknob to go pitch you to open up for sexy times without concerning that the pull that the bullet might go pachu or pachu. So I'm just sitting here. Like I enjoyed that moment. But I think I enjoyed the line where J where James was like, yeah, he just watched her enjoy everything that he was doing to her. I just I don't know what to do about this mess. It just that line where he shot the doorknob just took me out so far that I was like, bring yourself back. It's like, it's like you know, I, I can't say this because my mother's gonna watch this, but you know, you know, when, you know, when it feels like someone, they're trying too hard and you're sitting here like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're just out of the moment, you have to bring yourself back aggressively and it's just not working. That's how I felt when he brought the pistol out. I was like, please don't shoot that door. And then he shot the door, oh my God. I don't know what my boyfriend's doing to my cat. Okay, my battery's dying, so we'll just leave it at that for the night. Because I'm just... I don't know what to do with this information, so... I'll catch up with y'all tomorrow when I read and probably finish the book. So it is now Saturday morning. It's overcasty outside, if you couldn't tell by the lighting. Um, I haven't read any more since I updated you all last. Yes. But I do have some issues I want to now that I am like a, like there's a quarter of the book left I want to say about a quarter of the book left so this was kind of my issue with Queen of Air and Darkness after I had done my initial review of it and like kind of sat on it was that while I did love the ending to Queen of Air and Darkness the plot in of itself wasn't as contained as the infernal devices and the moral instruments like the infernal devices like some bit some components of it carried into the mortal instruments and vice versa because they were it was written in between the the original trilogy and then the subsequent trilogy which i don't think should have been a trilogy it should have been one of the duology neither here nor there but queen of air and darkness there were so many plot points that are continue that are going to continue to grow into the wicked powers that certain plot points such as Thule, such as um, Clary, da like su such as Thule, Jace, and all that stuff. I'm testing over normal Clary because she is the Clary who lived, um, it, and as well as like other aspects, such as the, the fallout of Idris being blocked out to all shadow hunters except like the handful that stayed there and was bigoted with Idris and everything. And then on top of that, Kit and Ty's fallout. And all the things that occurred within there, it just feels like, you know, one of the reasons why I think Queen of Air and Darkness isn't my favorite ending out of the trail, out of the Shadowhunters world is because there are so many plot points that are still ongoing and it's not as contained as like the original Moral Instruments trilogy where we have Valentine, Valentine and then we have the subsequent which is the City of Heavenly Fire, Lost Souls, Fallen Angels where Lilith and Sebastian were the subsequent villains that are also still as contained and remain a problem in those books. Like we don't see reg shush. We don't see regular Sebastian in the further books. Same thing with the Infernal Devices where I think Mortman Mortman, I don't remember I never know how to pronounce his name, was the big bad guy of the infernal devices and we don't really see him unless it's like a mention here and there in subsequent books now if i were to ma name a contained bad guy within the trilogy of the last hours it would be belial belial and tatiana i think are the contained um bad guys of this book they only they only seem to exist and will continue they will their existence and um, more so because Belial is a, god, a demon, a prince of hell to be exact, but it'll stay contained within the realm of this trilogy. Whereas my concern, and I think why my theory is that people are giving it three to four stars, is that Lilith in of herself, her part in the books seemed to play a bigger role in the subsequent world 
Like we see her in um, the Mortal Instruments. She is the big baddie of the Mortal Instruments. So it feels like her plotline, the Paladin plotline, it doesn't feel like it'll be contained in the last book. I have like an inkling that it'll continue into the Wicked Powers, which is probably where it gets its name from because the, the powers of the, an the angels and the demons are somewhat wicked is the theory that I'm following. Um, but it doesn't feel at her plot line doesn't feel as contained and I think my biggest issue with this book when I when I finish it is that it'll be it's something that will fully wrap up like it's not like a soft wrap um, I don't think that plot line will be a hard wrap if that makes sense where you only see it contained within the trilogy but a softer un like wrap up that'll leave it more open-ended for the wicked powers that's just the vibe that i'm getting which then makes me concerned for the wicked powers because if it's only a trilogy and it's supposed to be the last big hurrah of the shadow hunter world we have the thule plot line and the thule jace and the thule sebastian we have the fairy prince plot line with sebastian and the silly queen's kid then potentially we have this lilith plot line i don't know how it'll go yet so i'll see how it works but this Lilith plotline with a paladin, which could be carried into Seb the Thule Sebastian or Thule Jace's plotline. So I really don't know what's going to happen, especially since now we have a generation, a person, people from each generation of Shadowhunters that we've seen this far. We have Jem and Tess we, and Magnus. Then we have the Mortal Instruments kids and the TDA kids. So I just... It's gonna be a lot, I feel, and I'm really concerned for the end of the Shadowhunter world just because it's like, it's gonna be this huge shebang of everything, but considering the fact that no one has been such strong support, has like, like it's not like the end of the the Infernal Devices, it's not like the end of the Shadowhunter, of um, the original trilogy of the Mortal Instruments or the subsequent trilogy of the Mortal Instruments. It's something about Queen of Air and Darkness and I feel like Chain of Thorns feels like it's leading up to the ending, which is fine, but like it's I think it's why people are getting it so many mixed reviews thus far. I've seen someone rate it a three, someone ra another person rated it a three from what I've heard. And I'm just sitting here like it's I think it's because it's supposed to lead up, but the problem is with that lead up we get no closure and we will not get that closure until the very end of like the entire universe which I'm just sitting here like this isn't I don't want to hate Chain of Thorns because I love The Last Hour so much like I have been so excited for Chain of Thorns and I just have this really like weird feeling at the back of my head that it'll be the same kind of ending as Queen of Air and Darkness where everyone's like yeah I enjoyed it but da 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 and it won't have the same kind of impact that the infernal devices and the mortal instruments have because it's meant to serve as like a stepping off point for the wicked powers which i think these characters are better um but that is my very long like eight minute spiel of that i probably am going to read a little bit i have the apartment to myself this morning so it would be a good time good time to read but yes i will update y'all when i read some more i am for sure going to read this morning before we all kind of have to go do our things because i'm like almost done but I'm just so, I'm so afraid. I just have a weird feeling that it's going to be the same for Queen, for Chair, for Chair of Thorns. For Chair, cha, Chair of Thorns. Chain of Thorns. So we will see how I feel. We'll find out, probably before the weekend is over. he was stabbed I thought he was dead oh my god oh my god oh my darling Whew. okay we're okay
what do I, what do I do? I don't know how to process. I look like a bog witch. I don't know how to, what do? Okay, we're just gonna keep reading. I'm just gonna keep reading. First dead. Christopher's dead. I am. I don't even know where I'm at in the book. Let's see. Ah, uh, I'm on page six hundred. I don't know what chapter that is. I don't know what day it is in that book. I am just in a state of mourning. Christopher, Kit is dead. Little Kit is dead. He's dead. And I am expected to go on and read the Shadowhunter books. Like there's nary a concern in the world. As if I didn't watch Piece of My Soul Die or read A Piece of My Soul Die. Like, I have probably like another hundred or so pages left since I'm at 600 and there's like 700 something, six pages in this book. Lisa, if you're watching this, we were all, you were wrong. You were majorly wrong. It was not Matthew whom was going to pass away. It was Kit. And I don't know what to do with myself now. I kind of, I kept reading after the fact, but I kind of want to stop reading. I kind of want to stop reading Shadowhunters because, like, I don't know what to do with that death. I feel like that death, while impactful for the characters, didn't do much. It's like, oh yeah, he's dead now, and we're all sad, and it's, yes, but I don't see, like, a moving point from here. I don't see, like, the ins, like, the point for the characters here. And then to boot, now Cecily has to go on not knowing what happened to her children. She doesn't even know Chris Christopher's dead yet, neither does Gabriel. I just, I don't know how to feel about this death. I'm just gonna lay here for a while. I can't lay here for a while because I have to go grocery shopping soon, so I'm just gonna lay here for a minute then get up and get ready to go grocery shopping and socialize with the knowledge that the precious bean of the Merry Thieves is deceased. Still Saturday, I haven't had a chance to update since I last updated. Um, it's now almost like 10 o'clock. It's a torrential downpour outside and we just got home from my parents. In terms of a reading update, I ha I read quite a bit more. Hold on, let me grab my book. Let me, let me get my book. So I have read a bit more. I think where I left off um, was that Kit had died. Now everyone's trying to figure out what's going on. So Belial had a magic mist that blocked off all of London and he gave people a choice and in exchange for James, um, he will go. He will be like, okay, I'll let the Shadowhunters go, but everyone else is stuck here. 
James did it, Matthew jumps after him as per usual, and now we have the, 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 the rest of the Merry Thieves, what remains of the Merry Thieves left behind. And now I can't tell if Thomas is dying or dead, can't tell what happened to Alistair, but I do know that Cordelia and Lucy are now heading into Edom to save Thomas and Matthew. I am beyond torn on how I feel. Like obviously it's just a lot of like emotions. It's a lot of like back to back to back. We lose Kit, then the the um por the thing goes up. All the shadow hunters save like I think like five or six day. Um, James and Matthew are taken away. No, James and Matthew are taken away. All the shadow hunters have left except for like six people. Then we have. Um, those six trying to figure out what to do, how to save Thomas and Matthew, where they can get, how they can stop the Watchers, who are like the demons, or the Chimera demons that have possessed the, um, the, si the dead bodies of the Silence Brothers and the Iron Sisters. And then we have now Cordelia and Lucy going to Edom under Lilith's behalf to potentially stop Belial, free Cordelia from her thing when she stops Belial, and then save Matthew and, um... James. Again, it's a lot of things happening back to back, which makes sense. I'm on chapter 30. Um, what do you call it? What's her name? Andre just finished the book and she said there's 35 chapters plus the epilogue and then coda. So I think I am almost to the end. I don't know if I'll read much tonight. I kind of want to at least get to like ch chapter 30 or 31 or through 30 and get into 31 and then finish up come tomorrow just because I kind of if if there's one thing about Cassie Clare books is that the amount of emotions that it makes me feel always inspires me to start writing which is great because I have as you all have known have been in a really bad writing slump for the past like year year and a half I've started working on something very slowly just taking my time with it and I'm starting to flesh out the characters and I want to flesh out a bit more I need to work on the world but right now I am just like inspired as one would say. I'm also just very unsure about finishing the book and my thoughts on the book so I think that's why I'm low-key procrastinating but we will see. I, th I Part of me is just like struggling because this is the second to last like major series and the third to last ended kind of like mid for me like it was good but it wasn't my favorite ending so I'm hesitant to finish this and see how I feel and then after this I'm probably gonna go through and read like the Sh Tales of the Shadow Hunter Market maybe borrow the library books for Last Book of White and all the, like the Alec and Magnus side stuff because I don't I'm not really as intrigued by those as I am the rest of them and then after that it's the last like the last jolt, the last bit of Shadow Hunters that we get. So I'm just like, part of me is like hesitant to finish because then that means like it, it's almost over. But then part of me is also hesitant to finish because what if it's just not the ending that I was like hoping for, that I was going to be satisfied with. So we'll see. I'm going to read because right now my boyfriend's talking in the bathroom. I need to take a shower because um, we just got torrentially downpoured on. Um, and then after that, I'll probably just like write for the rest of the night and then maybe we'll look into reading. I will update y'all once I probably, f unless something else happens, once I finish the book. I don't know what else could happen. Alrighty, so I finished the book, finished the book like probably like an hour or two ago, and I wanted some time to really sit with it and think. I gave it a four. Was I super invested in the characters and just like invested in the storyline and what was going to happen to them and my blinds are still moving, it's fine. Super invested in the characters, what was going to happen to them and just like the overall ending of the book. Yes, that I like the world building, the kind of almost like wraparound services that we get with these Shadowhunter books where you do end up knowing where this is going to lead up to in the larger thought of things, like especially once we land in more present day with the moral instruments. Yes. Did I enjoy the big bad guys and how everything was wrapped up and so on and so forth? Yes. My biggest issue, and that's more so like something I touched on earlier and why I don't think I had such like a visceral reaction to the ending as I thought I would have had 
it was a very happy ending. It's very happy. We get to see lots of things that are finishing up. We're seeing characters mourn. We're seeing them grow and settle into themselves. Matthew is going to go travel for a year. You know, he's he's. He's, he's traveling, Cordelia and James will finally enjoy their honeymoon, Lucy is writing, is with Jesse, Grace is going off on her own and becoming like her own person and like learning all the things that she would like to learn that she hasn't had in the past. Anna, Al, Anna and Ari are moving in together, Thomas and Alistair are moving in together, all those things. It's all, it's a very good ending, but there were, like I said, the things that kind of I knew was going to keep me from giving it a four. One of them was that the ending was happy, but it, oh, hold on, I think my ramen's boiling. <laughs> bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And the actual thing that I had was that I felt like that the main, that the main villains, one of them in particular was Lilith, but now it's also partially Belial, were too big to be contained within the plot of the trilogy. And I was sitting there like, I knew something was going to have to carry over and that it wasn't going to be fully wrapped up. Now we have Lilith who like disappears and like she's a greater demon so I have a feeling she will be back because I think Thule Sebastian is up and running or Thule Jace which will open them to the possibility of them being a willing paladin for Lilith to like wreak havoc and like you know destroy the shadow hunters is all we know it. And then there was a point made in the coda, like the chapter is really just coda, where it's Jem's perspective and then we see that there's a new Belial in town, but this Belial is like a different bloodline, so he has no want to kill this family yet. So he could also be the next potential villain of this. Part of me is thinking that it will be along the lines that like, um, it'll be a war on demons in the sense that like the demon, like the princes of hell will want to fight each other for the realms and then start picking and choosing paladins here left and right and then we'll finally get to see some like literal divine intervention that we saw in the third book of A City of Glass but theories are just speculating and because that those villains were so big and large and kind of like not c easily contained within this trilogy it's not like you know Valentine or Lilith and Sebastian or Mortman, you know, they were all kind of contained within that, or even Malcolm, Fade, we don't get to see that. So it's just one of those things where, like, it wasn't satisfying enough to me, like, it wasn't like the, like, clockwork, like, the clockwork, like, in the internal devices are wrapped up beautifully, or the original TMI trilogy, or even the secondary TMI trilogy, where the endings wrapped up, and it felt concrete and whole. So that it was missing something for me with that ending, so I was like, eh, probably not the full 5. I was think thinking of giving it the 4.5 treatment, and then I talked about it a little bit more with Andrea, and I think we're still in, the middle of talk still in the middle of talking about it. I was not satisfied with Christopher's death. Yes, it was heartbreaking, it broke me into a million pieces, it kept mentioning Christopher and his big heart throughout the rest of the book, and I was just brought to tears every single time. But my biggest issue was that his death served nothing for the actual plot of the book. Like, he died specifically so Grace could get, like, not even a redemption act, but a chance to, to be proven worthy and to have her own abilities and, like, start figuring that out. Which could have been easily done with Christopher either, like, comatose or unable to really do anything because he was, like, maybe badly injured and couldn't move around. But to have him die felt not there. We didn't get to see C Cecily's and Gabriel's reaction to her death and their his parents. We got to see a very watered-down version of, like, Anna... Anna? Anna Lightwood? Anna's and the Mary Thieves' reaction to his death. Even Cordelia didn't have such, like, a strong reaction to his death. It was all very watered down and at first I thought I was like, okay, well this makes sense. This is understandable because he, they're in the heat of battle. People are dying. They might die. They can't grieve the same way that they would typically grieve if like it was in a battle and they brought his body back and they had a moment of rest. So I was expecting that moment of rest, but then they just instead had this symbolic thing of like putting things in the past and like burying things in the past behind them. And I think I would have much rather have had that moment done with Christopher, um, Christopher's funeral, and have seen those reactions, because right, because now that I'm thinking about it, he literally only died 
so Grace could create the fire messages or finish creating the fire messages. But he, other than that, his death served nothing. There was no point in it, and I was just kind of like at a loss because he could have easily done that with Grace next to him, or it could have been he could have been incapacitated and like knocked out or just un or like struggling from the poison, struggling from the poison from the knife, while Grace finished it. It could have been just those things done easily, but instead it was just Christopher dying. And I was just, it's just, just very disappointing. Very, it was very disappointing. His death, I mean. Um, yeah, I think a solid four for the book. Nothing on this, I don't think Cassie will be able to ever. I think the next epic satisfying ending will be the Wicked Powers ending. Because thus far, the, the Dark Artifices and the Last Hours have only been like set up novels, set up trilogies. For the Wicked Powers. Whatever's gonna happen in the Wicked Powers is a culmination of what happened in the Dark Artifices and in the Last Hours is the vibe that I'm reaching for here. So I think that's what's gonna happen and I am excited to see where that goes but right now I am unsure because I'm unsure how to feel about that following that trilogy because it makes me kind of bitter because we lost out on two very great endings for another truly they're just gonna come and wrap everything up in a pretty little bubble so we'll see but I am gonna go now this is it for this vlog I will have a spoiler free review up for this I think it'll be done I don't know we'll see how I feel on Monday if I feel like filming but if I feel like filming then the review will go up and then the vlog but if I don't feel like filming the vlog will go up and then the review who knows but if you like this video I'm gonna do more vlogs I do try to vlog like monthly so if you like that keep an eye out for my channel other than that, hit like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video. If you guys have read Chain of Thorns, let me know your thoughts below in the least spoilerly way possible. If you guys are planning on reading Chain of Thorns, why are you watching a spoiler-filled video? Um, but yeah, until next time, stay safe. It's snowing outside my window again, and I'm over it. I want to be able to wear dresses without fumbling for tights. It's fine. Fine. Bye. Thank you.